I had a little bit of issues with some fittings leaking inside the machine and it seems like that's kind of common for these budget type machines. So I have a fix for that. It was super easy. It costs less than probably a dollar and maybe an hour of my time. So it's something worthwhile doing so that you don't drain off all your gas. But this is a high frequency start TIG welder. It's just a very nice welder. I hope everybody had a good Christmas and New Year. I took off two weeks to be with my family, but things are piling up and I got a pile of stuff to do. Check this out guys, how cool is this? I picked this up for my grandson. It does like three and a half miles an hour. And I've got this somewhat stripped apart. I'm doing electrical, I was hoping to do headlights. I gotta do a coolant flush and an oil change. I gotta get back on this. This is the TRX-70 project. That is what we're gonna be focusing on next. We're gonna do some welding on this. I'm going to make a custom grab bar. We'll fabricate up something for that. That ought to look pretty cool. I'm also going to try my hand at banging out this metal guard and trying to get that back into shape see what we can do there. That's a new tire for my Suzuki. You can see that that's pretty roached, but this is what our next project involves in today. So I got to pull off this. You see this bolt right here? Well, that's like a four millimeter screw down on the, under the side there. It's all stripped out. So this fairing gets all loose and it wobbles. So this could be a repair to just about any type of stripped out screw hole. I, I can't go up a size on this, so I have to actually make this four millimeters again. So what we're going to do is we're going to TIG weld a nut inside of there, prep it up, and then we'll probably end up having to re-tap the nut when we're done. So that's what we're working on next. That also reminds me, we got to weld up this exhaust too. So somebody took the factory exhaust and just lopped it off. And then they put like this band clamp on it. So what I want to do is make a adapter that hugs it a little bit tighter to the bike. And you see how that kicks way out. We got to do that. Not a big deal, but that's some uh, stainless steel. So we'll weld that too gonna start by taking out these fairing bolts and we got some stuff up here we got to take apart if you haven't seen this this is a was a real fun project I picked this bike up uh, learned a little bit of the history it had been wrecked and when I bought it it's got super low miles on it uh, it really had been neglected and it had set for years so we did a pile of work on this something you're interested in I'll put a link to the playlist up above but it was pretty fun I had a good time with this this is my daily driver I love this bike pretty clean bike though I mean you can see very low miles uh, when I bought it, it had 11,000 miles on it I put uh, over 3,000 miles on it this summer like I said this is my daily driver I don't have very much money in this bike so uh, but everything is all up to date it's got uh, Galfer uh, brake lines, brakes have been all redone. It even had the stock brake pads in it when I bought it, the original brake pads. Um, I've got, I flushed out the fluid for the rear and it's got new pads on the rear, but I don't have a new line on it. So this is the original brake line to the bike and I have a set of Galfer brake lines for it uh, that I'm going to put on at some point. So. But yeah, this is a real super reliable bike. I would take this cross country and have no fears of it breaking down. Just very reliable. Like I said, I've gone through this entire bike from front to back. I've put a wrench on everything. I've touched every bolt. I've looked in and inspected everything. So this is just a super reliable bike. Even though it's crashed, I had to put a whole new front end on it. Um, yeah, if you want to watch that series and you can check it out, I discovered that it had had uh, bent forks, pr considerably bent forks. And the guy I bought it from drove it for 10 years with bent forks on it. I don't know if he knew that they were bent, but yeah, they were. All right, here's the plan. So this is that hole that stripped out. Can you see how it should have threads down in there, but it doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this out just a little bit larger. That way it'll get rid of all that rust and uh, any of the bad metal. Then I'll grind back a little bit around this and then we'll TIG weld this right shut. The hole will be closed right off. Then once the hole's shut, then we'll just uh, drill a hole through it and tap it. Piece of cake.
Now that we got a hole all prepped, now we got to get a welder set up. Let's get going. For this repair, I'm going to be using my Anson TIG 205. This is an awesome welder for this. If you want to know more about it, I'll put links up above to the review. This is a great bargain welder. I had a little bit of issues with some fittings leaking inside the machine, and it seems like that's kind of common for these budget type machines. So I have a fix for that. It was super easy. It costs less than probably a dollar and maybe an hour of my time. So it's something worthwhile doing so that you don't drain off all your gas. But this is a high frequency, start TIG welder. It's just a very nice welder. I use this primarily for TIG welding, but you can stick weld with it. But I prefer my Blue Demon for stick welding, and I like this for TIG. Turn on the gas. Just about a full bottle. Let's do post flow right about there. And let's start out about, oh, 30 amps. I'm using a number six cup. My tungsten is ground to a point. I don't know what it is. It's whatever I was using last time. I have a bunch of different uh, tungstens that I like. And I'm just using a regular old ER706 wire. Same wire you'd use in your MIG welder. Same idea. So this is just that wire, but bigger. Now we're just going to wipe down our area with some acetone real quick. You gotta use acetone. Don't use brake cleaner or carbon choke cleaner or anything like that. You'll make a poisonous gas. Uh, you don't want to do that. Been there, done that. Not pretty. Wipe your rod down. Same thing. You gotta be real clean when you're TIG welding. I'm going to go a little bit hotter. It's going to go a little bit hotter. I had to turn on my homemade fume extractor. If you haven't seen how I made that, I'll put a link up above. You guys can check it out. But here's the repair. I don't have the proper filter, so you guys can watch me actually make the bead or whatnot. So all I did is just wet the base metal just a little bit and just start metering rod. It's pretty, pretty simple. This repair is what is called plug welding. When you take a hole and you weld it shut, it's good practice uh, for you guys learning to TIG weld and stuff. Just drill a hole in some plate steel and just work on wetting the base metal. So just put your torch on it until the base metal starts to wet and then just start metering your rod just a little bit at a time until the hole is completely shut. And that's what I've done here. So now it's time to drill the hole and then we'll get ready to tap it. Now I'm gonna drill it out with a small pilot bit and then I'm gonna progressively increase the size until I'm at the right size that we need to be at. nice and steady on this. You don't want to get too carried away because the last thing you need to do is break off a tap. And this is just a cheap, inexpensive uh, tap set I picked up at uh, Harbor Freight. So, and it's just a carbon steel tap, so it's probably not the best. So you just go at it easy and it should go.
Yeah. Now I'm just going to chamfer the uh, inlet, and then we'll just run the tap down through it again. That'll help when you go to put the bolt in. It'll help kind of like line it into the threads. Just a little tapered rig here. There, just like that, we are back in business. And that's all there is to it. Give you a little hint on touching this up. Go raid your wife's fingernail polish. See if she's got some black polish. Black fingernail polish works perfect on doing touch-up stuff like this on frames. It's real durable, so works real good. You can see back here, I have a couple little areas that just got rubbed or something so I just touched them with some black fingernail polish good as new just don't let your wife see how good of a job you can do then she's gonna want you to paint her toes and you might have to do two coats too and there it is has a nice durable hard shell finish when it dries and that's all there is to it. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If this is something that you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. There's new videos every Friday. And if you want to find out what I'm working on before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Instagram and on Facebook. I want to thank you guys. Have a good day. Take care. Till next Friday. I'll see you then. Stay safe. See ya. Come, come.